Hi, today we're going to explore the string data type and user input. So the string data type. Uh, in previous uh, classes, examples and exercises, we've seen text being used to provide users with uh, output, instructions, prompts, basically ask, asking them for information. Uh, the text is of the string data type in Python. Um, that's data type str. So strings can be a very powerful data type to harness, so to build large programs and extract data from existing text. Uh, but before we can accomplish such, uh, I would say, feats, um, we need to know the basics of processing string data. So uh, Python and other programming languages support different kinds of primitive data types. And uh, so this is the context for the strings. Uh, we have integers, floating point variables, strings, uh, there's also boolean uh, variables so these primitive data types uh, are the fundamental data types that cannot be broken down into simpler data types well that's that's how we we uh state this actually strings can be broken down uh, into characters uh, there are sets of characters however uh, it, it is integrated into the uh, programming language because um well strings are very practical in the sense that we always communicate with long chains of characters, uh, this text, for example, on the screen. So there's a list of primitive data types here. Some of the primitive data types that are part of Python. Uh, int is the integer uh, number. Float is a floating point number. Bool is a Boolean value. These are values true and false. Uh, this is one of the data types that's going to be very important in the future. And uh, str, the string characters. Um, the strings of character, which are going to be the topic for today. Um, so just uh, in passing, Boolean values, uh, this, this is the Boolean data type, which is uh, basically two possible values, true or false. It's intended to represent truth values in logic uh, in Boolean algebra. And Boolean algebra comes from George Boole, uh, who uh, defined the system in the 19th century boolean variables can hold two values true or false uh, they're obtained uh, and modified uh, by their own sets of operators which we will see in a later lecture and uh, we'll spend more time uh, on this later when we learn control structures so back to strings a string is a sequence of unicode characters unicode is a standard set of characters built to uh, to uh, hold the characters from all languages in the world okay so it's it may not be that way right now but it's constantly being uh, upgraded updated to integrate more languages uh, there's an update in 2020 a string is defined uh, between a pair of quotation marks it could be a uh, single straight quotation marks or double straight quotation marks and the difference between them is mainly going to be the characters that need to be escaped inside of, the, of them and we're going to talk about escaping characters or escape sequences uh, right after this um, in many programming languages double straight quotation marks uh, are the only uh, delimiter for strings so what are these escape sequences so uh, let's take an example um, there's two possible delimiters for strings in Python. There's the double quotation mark the sing and the single quotation mark. Uh, some characters are harder than others to write in strings because, well, if you want to integrate these delimiters inside the string, you have to somehow tell Python, well, this is not a string delimiter, so please do not take this as the end of the string. Um, so escape sequences, they're used to represent in a string special characters such as the delimiters so that's one example and there's also other characters that can't be typed on a keyboard right um, the escape sequence it always starts with a backslash the backslash is the slanting towards the left slash not the slanting towards the right slash the backslash will be combined with another character and this is going to be the escape sequence Okay, so here's a few commonly used escape sequences. There are many others. So we have the backslash double quotation mark, the backslash single quotation mark, the backslash backslash. Since the backslash has a special meaning, 
being that it starts at an escape sequence, it needs its own escape sequence. We have backslash T for the tab and backslash N for the new line or enter. So say I want to write the following string inside Python and then John Sang uh, will give it a shot. So now what I need is I need to include in that string the escape sequences to encode the delimiters at least. So let's look. We have and then John Sang. We'll give it a shot. If we start the string with a single quotation mark, then single quotation marks inside the string have to be escaped. All right. If we start the string with a double quotation mark, then double quotation marks inside the string need to be escaped. This is going to tell Python, I want to have a quotation mark inside the string. I do not want to use this quotation mark as the end of the string. So if you did not escape the delimiters, they'd be considered as the ends of the string. So if you look here in the case of the single quotation mark and then John Sang, double quotation mark, we, and then you see the single quotation mark, which is considered as the end of the string. And whatever's in red after, well, that's not part of a string. So that's going to be read as, is this an, an instruction? Python is going to get this and it's going to say, well, there's, there's some bad code here. Okay, so let's look at what it looks like actually in Python. So if I write, uh, and then John said or sang we'll give it a shot all right so now I try to place the quotation mark when I forgot the double quotation mark inside there we go now you see that Python says that there is invalid syntax because well the string actually starts here at and and it ends right after the we. If we place the backslash to escape this single quotation mark, then the string becomes valid again. Perfect. In the second example, it's quite similar. So I say we won't even talk about this part. Well, um, basically, what happens if I write it like that and then I put a comment. Hello, this is a comment. Well, actually this is not going to be read as a comment. This is going to be read as a string. If I were to place a quotation mark after, that would be a correct string. So forgetting your quotation marks is going to be a major issue. If I place the slash, it becomes a comment again. Okay, the story is the same with the double quotation mark, except the end changes. So let's use these escape sequences to create word art. Let's just say I want to say I heart triangles. Then I could use escape sequences to provoke new lines. So let's write this. print a string i and then I could use the backslash n escape sequence to create new lines all right I heart triangles This may or may not be useful to you, but this is an example use of escape sequences. As you can see, each time a backslash n has been met inside the string, a line has been skipped without having to use multiple print statements. So as an exercise, you could use one print statement to write work hard but work smart. 
pause this video and try it for yourself. What about user input? Uh, we've learned how to display something uh, in the console output and we've used the input function in the past already to gather user input. Um, but it's worth noting that uh, all user input comes in the form of a string. Um, and it doesn't matter what we input from the keyboard. It could be letters, numbers, anything in between. It's still going to be a string. In Python, we ask uh, for user input as follows. So we write the input variable is equal to the input function and then a hint uh, where you put uh, instructions for the user to see. And this is going to be the only output you need for that user, right? Um, so for example, if I were to right here name is equal to input please enter your name and then i could print out the name okay run that please enter your name john and then i see john being printed out okay in one line you can provide output for the user to understand what to do and then take the user input and place it inside a variable for later processing 